As the creator economy matures, we're really able to see the trend in the career span of a creator and what that actually looks like. And I think last year was a really interesting year. I saw a record number of creators that I have watched over time return back to traditional forms of employment or add a traditional form of employment alongside their creative side hustle, or even go back to try and get more traditional forms of education. And I thought that that was such an interesting trend. And another thing that I saw was a lot of creators coming forward and say, you know what, I used to make a crap ton of money and I'm no longer making any money. As you guys know, I'm super interested in money and talking about money and understanding money. And as a creator myself, I've seen a lot of the highs and the pros of earning money as a creator and a lot of the cons. And in this video, I kind of wanted to talk about what the cons are of earning as a creator. And especially when you make it your full-time job, because I think online, if you go on TikTok, if you go on YouTube, we're so used to hearing creators say, how I made 30 k in one month and how i made this and there's so much conversation around how much creators can make and i love that conversation and i think that it's good that we continue to share to show people that you can make money outside of traditional career paths and that there are so many ways that you can diversify your income but there's also a lot of risks there's also a lot of cons with earning money as a creator and i don't think we have enough conversation about what those cons are not to put people off trying to become a creator but to educate people on the common pitfalls that you might find yourself falling into as a creator and then the things that you can do to mitigate them. That's what I wanna be exploring in this video. I did an intro before, but I don't feel like it was really clear as to what I was trying to say. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let me tell you guys now that the lighting will change in this video because it's like 5 p.m. right now and the sun goes down super early in Dubai. One of the first flaws of um, earning as a creator is that your earnings are linked to your popularity and your likability. The more views that you are getting as a creator, the more you are going to make for the most part, right? Things can differ slightly, but for the most part, the more views you're getting, the more you're going to make. So to earn consistently, you need to be getting views consistently. And that's fine if you are super popular. But one thing you would notice with us as human beings is that we change a lot um, and trends change a lot. So for example, when I started watching YouTube, the natural hair community on YouTube was big. A lot of the biggest female, especially black female creators, um, were people who were doing stuff to do with natural hair. There was a trend of a lot of black women doing the big chop, but it's not really a trend anymore. People aren't really as interested in that content. How many of the content creators that you knew that were creating natural hair content, you know, seven years ago, still create natural hair content today. So it's easy for trends to come and go. And the same way trends come and go, you can lose your 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 relevance. I don't really like to say that, but I guess that's what it is because you don't use your, your relevance and your value in, in real life, but you can lose your relevance and your value online, right? Depending on what people want to see. There are many creators who have managed to stay relevant over 10 years, but it's not that many people. And to be able to do that, it takes real skill. Like like real, real, real skill. I feel like someone who has done that quite well is like Jackie Aina. She's really managed to maintain her relevance well, but there are a lot of people who cannot do that. And the reason why I say this is a skill is because there are some people who have tried to kind of reinvent themselves online. Some people really, really struggle um, when they do that and actually can face a lot of backlash from their followers when they change and when they adapt. And that can impact your income. Because a career usually is something that you do over the span of like, 40 years like most people will start out in their career around the age of like 20 and they're not retiring till they're 40 and that's not to say that your average traditional person does the same the exact same career for 40 years but some people really do but when it comes to a creator we're yet to see because the creator economy hasn't been around for that long 40 years but it's highly unlikely that the majority of creators will be able to sustain a certain level of viewership um, and a reliable income for 40 years because we just changed so much. And I think another point under this is that not only do we as individuals, as the viewers, but also as the, create, as the creator, not only do we change a lot, but then platforms change a lot. For a lot of creators, the income is then tied to a specific platform. So for example, when I started out, MSN was the popping social media, and then Facebook was the popping social media, and then Snapchat was the popping social media and then Instagram and then TikTok because we're always moving from platform to platform literally algorithm to algorithm for some creators just a change in platform can cause them to lose a lot of their influence because it's like 
I gotta start again. It's not also just the change in platforms. It, it, can, it drills down even into a change in algorithms. Like literally, the reason why I think that I was even able to like reach over 10K followers on Instagram um, is because the algorithm changed from favoring pictures to, to, to favoring videos. Because when I was just posting pictures, um, on Instagram, I wasn't growing as fast because I don't actually take a lot of pictures. Like I'm definitely not a picture girl. I have 50K followers now on, on, on Instagram and that was literally due to reels. Like there was no other way I was doing that without reels um, because the algorithm changed to favor reels. You were a picture person, but you hated videos and then the algorithm changes. That little thing is huge. It's huge when you're a creator and it's something that could also affect your income. Colin and Simi, they are really, really good in terms of like looking into trends for um, creators and they just interview a lot of really good creators and they did an interview with Emma Chamberlain. Never watched one of her videos before. One of the things that she speaks about is that during her era on YouTube, YouTubers didn't feel like they could take a break because if you did take a break, then you would lose a lot of your followers or your subscribers or the interest of people who are following you. And I think this is a huge thing to consider when it comes to making money as a creator because that can lead to a lot of burnout. Feeling like you cannot take a break, whereas us that those of us who have traditional jobs, we can take up to about 25 days, right? That's actually five weeks, like five Monday to Friday Friday weeks off of work and not have it impact how much we are making but there are lots of creators who feel like they can't take a break now that like a lot of the earlier creators like the first the real first creators are coming up to like their 10 years plus of creating online coming so much more clearer now to create analyze the trend of what's happening to some of like our favorite creators who are going back to get regular jobs or who are leaving social media and and let me tell you it's not a bad thing like even with a traditional career you can choose to pivot it's not a bad thing at all because of all of the things that i mentioned previously in my opinion the way i kind of see like the creator's career likened it to how wealth managers see the income of footballers where they may Make the majority of their money or even other athletes as well they make the majority of their money in a concentrated period of time let's say for a footballer maybe like from when you're i don't know my brothers are going to be like what are you even talking about maybe from like when you're like 20 to 35 make the, the the majority of your income when you know you're at your prime of your football years and, and so the majority of your money is going to come in that period for the rest of the period you need to be able to make sure that you are managing your money to be able to care for yourself when the income starts to, to, to fall and that's not to say that you shouldn't be a footballer of course and that's not to say that you shouldn't be a creator it's just that you have to understand what the patterns of your earnings are like if i'm looking on a monthly basis and i've just closed a campaign for 20k and in one campaign and i'm I'm looking at my peers and they are only earning like three thousand pounds a month of course i'm gonna feel like ah, i'm making so much money i have the ability to just i have the ability to spend a lot more than my peers and one thing that i would always caution is while you might be out earning some of your peers as a creator like, like i said you might be earning 20k a month and they're only making 3k a month you have to be weary that at least for someone with a traditional career path they can almost guarantee that their pay is gonna go up in a year's time, in two years time, in three years time. That is usually the trajectory of someone's traditional career. Your income should be increasing. Whereas with a creator, your income might go up significantly like in five years. And then it can also like, it can also drop as well. And I'm really not trying to be like, doom and gloom or trying to be negative about like how you earn as a creator. I do hope that for most creators, they will like continue to just increase the amount of money that they make every single year. And I think there are definitely examples of people who have done that and have done that really, 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 really well. Not that I know people's pockets, but let's just say for example, Nella Rose, she seems to have done really well year after year after year. Jackie Aina as well, um, Patricia Bright is someone, people who you kind of see to have do really, really well year after year after year. But you have to remember that these people make up a very, very small proportion of um, content creators. That's on a longer term basis, but also on a short term basis. As a creator, I can tell you that in one month, like you can secure a contract of like a campaign deal of like, let's say 10K, for example, 5K, and you're actually not even gonna get paid to another six months down the line because the campaign maybe takes two months to go live. And then they tell you that they have a, a pay cycle of like 60 days or some crazy stuff like that. So you can get paid in one month and you might even secure some partnerships 
relationships, but then you're not gonna get paid to a couple months later. And, um, a lot of the people who make content about having multiple streams of incomes are creators, right? Seven streams of income, eight streams of income, nine streams of income. But when you actually look into that, and this is from me like having an internal um, retrospection on like my streams of income, and this is something that I, I work up to like maybe two, three years ago. A lot of your multiple streams of income, you think you're diversifying as a creator by having multiple streams of income, but actually a lot of those income streams are linked. So let's say for example, you have a YouTuber and their main stream of income or the main generator behind their business model or their pay structure as a creator is their YouTube channel. And off the branch of that, they have courses, off the branch of that, they have brand partnerships, off the back of that, they might have some, some products that they are selling, some merchandise, well diversified, great. But in reality, all of those four streams are super hyper linked to each other. So if the main engine is your YouTube channel and the YouTube channel starts to decline or you no longer post on that YouTube channel, maybe not immediately, but gradually those other income streams will also start to fall as well because they, they rely on that main engine. Having said that, not that I'm a financial advisor or anything, but this is my kind of antidote to um, that issue that some creators may face is one, I definitely do feel like creators should, when they want to and when it applies to them, should start businesses. But I think from the things that I've seen, I think a creator should start a business when they are like, I don't wanna say at the height of their influence, but when they are doing really well, when they have a really good engaged audience, when they're bringing in those views, as opposed to when they start to see the influence start to fall. I kind of tell when someone is doing, starting something to just make money, as opposed to really starting something because they are passionate about it and, and because they really like believe in their product or like really want to influence people through what they are selling. It's a lot of work to start a business as well. Um, and let's not underplay that. But then also I think people can pick up when you're just doing things not from the right heart posture. What's super important about the business that you start is maybe it's something that is not so reliant on your main source of influence. If you no longer want to post, if you want to take a break, if you're burnt out, want something that you can still maintain without your main source of influence. Someone who's done really well with that, let's say is Grace Beverly. She still uses her influence to promote her businesses, right? She still, she still is definitely active on like Instagram, for example, and promotes Tyler. But I think she's built a brand so strong that even if she was to disappear for a bit, maybe the, it, maybe the profits might be impacted, but like the business is still a qualified business in and of itself and does not like solely depend on her influence right and I think that just gives you the ability to take a break take a step back and just not be just not have everything tied to your face and your ability to speak and your ability to show up. Jackie Aina has also really done well with that with Forever Mood. It's in store, so you have that element of like, actually, even if I don't show up, it's in the store, so someone might just pick it up, smell it, and actually buy it. I think another way is to just make offline investments as well, so investments into property. Um, you know, the, the queen, Patricia Bright, has done that really well. And I think one of the things that really stuck out to me one time, where I think it was two years ago now, um, um, we were at like a YouTube event. Someone actually asked her a question on being canceled. One of the things that she said that I like absolutely loved is that you, they can cancel me, but they can't cancel my bank balance. And I love that because that's kind of like a confidence that you know what, whilst I like want to make money as a creator and I'm still making money as a creator, even if they completely canceled me, I have fortified my finances enough that like I'm good. Given that being a creator can be quite for some people, perhaps like a very unstable way to make money, maybe investing into things that are offline and stable um, can give you that good balance where you can continue focusing on thriving as a creator and making that money, but then also have some businesses that are um, able to operate off when I say offline is like kind of what I mentioned with the first point, it doesn't rely on you. Like being a property investor, your properties will keep going. You're not relying on the Patricia, Patricia Bright <clears throat> or like me myself, I'm not relying on my face or anything that I do online to have tenants in my property. Someone who has done this so well that people think that he has fallen off. And I don't know if you guys would know who this creator is, but it's Casper Lee. This is back in the Zoella days, right? This is what, what, 10 years ago uh, when I used to watch Zoella. I also, I also used to watch her brother like Thatcher Joe on YouTube. I've always loved YouTube, right? And I think that's how I got introduced to Cat to Casper Lee. They were huge on YouTube back then. Like they were like some of the first creators to hit a million subscribers. They had like everyone was watching them. And then like I would say like they 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 went ghost. Like Casper went ghost. I feel like at his prime, like when he was still 
you're bringing in like millions of views, he kind of stops YouTube. And then what you kind of saw following that was like a bunch of videos was like, what happened to Casper Lee oh, and the downfall of Casper Lee and like all of these sort of videos. And I was like, mm, hmm. And then I literally just went on his LinkedIn. Don't ask me what took me to his LinkedIn. And I was like, this guy didn't have a downfall. He has played the book so well that this is what most creators want to do where they, you know, they, they grow their platforms, they have all of the influence, especially when they are young, they make the money and they invest into things online. That means that they no longer have to <clears throat> rely on putting themselves out there um, to make money. So in, I think he did an interview, I don't know who he did an interview with, but I was watching an interview and he was just kind of saying that now that he has his relationship and like he's trying to settle down and stuff. I think he actually lived in Dubai for a bit as well. Cause I remember I saw him in like Matt and Summer's vlogs and stuff. And I was like, this guy is like happy. He's just living his life. I think that's what triggered me to kind of see what he was doing. Cause like I saw him in their vlog and I was like, oh my God, this guy, what happened to him? What Casper Lee had done is that he literally invested into so many different like businesses, kind of related to what he did but kind of not related to what he was doing so um one of the businesses that he has he actually runs like one of the top um social like influencer agencies i think it's actually called influencer literally leverages off of all of the knowledge that he has learned by being like one of the early influencers and creators who did really really well started his own influencer agency he also um and i and i came across this because i was um you guys know that i have like a property in south africa he actually um co-owns or something like a, a block of student accommodation in South Africa I would proper 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 living like you guys can just check out his um, LinkedIn and, and, and also see this as well but he co-founded another business uh, which is like a student accommodation business and then he has like the influencer agency that he runs he's also like a board member he invests in creators he literally took all of the money that he made as a creator and started multiple businesses and the businesses are like very 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 successful to the point where he just doesn't create anymore not because he is slacking or because his views are, are down or because he had a downfall or like all of these things that people were making videos about he's a really good example of to look at like how you can use your influence and the money that you make in your prime to actually build um a, like build a sustainable financial base offline i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna wrap this video up here because honestly <laughs> the sun is literally going down this was just a topic that i just wanted to talk about because i just find it super interesting and if you are a creator um watching this like go hard like go hard with content creation because the upside is honestly unlimited the upside is literally unlimited and you know the more effort and, and the harder you go into it the longer your shelf life as a creator can be and i'm not discouraging anyone 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 from wanting to become a creator or going being a creator full-time um do it do it do it do it do it do it every way of earning has its downfalls right like even if we just comp compare like being a traditional contractor to being like a traditional employee there's pros and cons for both and so you have to be aware of those pros and cons so that you could successfully mitigate the cons right so that that's all i'm trying to do here what do i know nothing i'm not even a full-time content creator i'm not a qualified financial advisor none of the things this is just my observations um if you guys enjoyed this video then please give the video a thumbs up i'll see you guys in my next video bye